Halito, hello. Greetings from the Choctaw Indian Reservation and the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. I am Tribal Chief Phyllis J. Anderson, and it is my pleasure to introduce this special film presentation, The Choctaw Triumph. This film celebrates what many call a miraculous story of defying odds, self-determination, and achievements. Our Choctaw people have lived on the Mississippi lands we call home well before history was ever recorded. It is the generation of storytelling, remembrance, and legacy that has kept our Choctaw spirit alive and vibrant. I hope you view this feature presentation about our great Choctaw people with attentive minds and open hearts and allow the legacy of our ancestors to speak of the triumphant Choctaw journey. Speak the language of our people is to remember all that has come to pass, the struggles and where we have come from, but it also tells of our success and where we are still to go. The name Chatta invokes the place we call home. For our great tribe, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians, it is this place, these deep south woodlands, streams and fields which have known us for so many centuries. All that precedes our presence here has been lost in the myths of time and legend. Here, we built our great mother mound, Nanawaya, so many generations ago, and it has outlasted mere history. To lose this place would be a profound tragedy, and it very nearly came to pass. The triumph celebrated by this film belongs to the Choctaws who bore generations of deprivation, disease, and the disdain of neighbors to keep hold of their birthright. It belongs to us, the generations that follow who honor that sacrifice by reclaiming through vision, determination, and hard work the stature the tribe originally enjoyed. Before Europeans first arrived, the Choctaws were flourishing in self-sufficient communities and were among the most progressive Indian tribes on the North American continent. Choctaws were expert farmers and savvy merchants and were the leading economic and commercial power in what is now southeastern United States. Our ancestors lived for the most part at peace with their neighbors with whom they preferred commerce to warfare. When Europeans first arrived in America, Choctaws greeted the explorers and settlers as friends and potential trading partners. At the end of the colonial period, Choctaw warriors served as scouts for General Washington in the Revolutionary War and fought alongside General Jackson's forces at the Battle of New Orleans. But the fortunes of our Choctaw ancestors were about to change for the worst. The Europeans brought more than ceaseless war to the Native Americans. They also brought diseases like smallpox to which the Native American tribes had no resistance. President Andrew Jackson used a thinly veiled threat of force to get Choctaws to abandon ancestral lands. Though the Choctaw people demonstrated their loyalty to the United States by siding with Americans in numerous wars and conflicts, our people still suffered a great loss at the hands of the federal government. Through a series of treaties, culminating with the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek in 1830, Choctaws were progressively stripped of their lands, yielding the last of our revered homelands to the United States government. With the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek, the vast majority of Mississippi Choctaw began the difficult journey to the Indian Territory of Oklahoma that came to be known as the Trail of Tears. The tiny fraction of Choctaws that chose to remain would pay a terrible price for their devotion to the traditions of the tribe. During these hardships, our ancestors remained unfailingly determined to sustain their strong sense of cultural and linguistic identity and community and family ties. Landless, destitute, and denied an adequate education, they were reduced for the most part to sharecropping. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Choctaw infant mortality rate was the worst in the nation and those who survived lived on an average less than 50 years. The federal government took little notice of the remaining Choctaws. 
in 1910, there were fewer than 1,300 Choctaws and they were dying faster than they were being born. The Mississippi Choctaws were headed for extinction. The long road back can be dated from 1916, when the Bureau of Indian Affairs granted a $1,000 grant to study the desperate plight of Native Americans in Mississippi. A congressional hearing was held in 1917 in the area south of Philadelphia, Union, Mississippi. It gave a vivid picture of an impoverished people that was personally dictated by tribal members York Tubby and a few other Choctaw people. They helped to create a new awareness of the destitute plight of a once great community. Not long after the end of World War I, things began to change for the tribe. Something truly remarkable happened. Instead of taking away land from the Choctaws, the government through the Bureau of Indian Affairs launched three acquisitions of Choctaw lands on behalf of the tribe in 1920. That was also the year in which a Choctaw school system was established, replacing previous missionary schools. After the adoption of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1930, the Mississippi Choctaws created their first temporary tribal council, a 16-member business committee, in 1934. It would be another decade in 1945 before the tribe adopted their own constitution and bylaws and was recognized by the Department of Interior as a federally recognized Indian tribe. Today, a 17-member tribal council, the legislative branch, and the tribal chief, the executive branch together, govern the 11,000 members of Mississippi Choctaws in eight communities on 35,000 acres of tribal lands. The tribal government oversees the allocation of tribal funds and expenditures of those funds for the many public programs the tribe provides. The chief is the principal executive officer developing the annual budget and implementing laws passed by the tribal council. This includes the nation's largest tribally operated educational system. This comprehensive program begins with early childhood education and continues through quality elementary, junior high, and high school. The school system has prepared thousands of young Choctaw men and women to attend college through scholarships funded by the tribe. To date, through earned gaming dollars, the tribe has paid more than $54 million in tuition for tribal members. All funds received from various tribal enterprises are applied to benefit the people and the community and to the maintenance and expansion of tribal infrastructure. Law enforcement, a function contracted from the Bureau of Indian Affairs in 1985, is now operated by the tribe. The Department of Public Safety now employs more than 130 tribal law and detention center personnel including uniformed police officers, canine officers, investigators, administrative positions, wildlife and parks, animal control, adult and juvenile detention center staff, all equal in training and quality to any in the state. The tribal government also operates a tribal court system that includes five judges and three justices, all appointed by the tribal council. Criminal court and some civil court cases are heard by a jury of tribal member peers. Cases are brought before a tribal court system through ordinances adopted by the tribal council. Tribal courts have jurisdiction over crimes committed on the reservation by Indian offenders and against some non-Indian offenders who commit domestic violence crimes against Native Americans on Choctaw lands. Certain crimes that occur on the reservation are tried in federal courts. The tribe's commercial, industrial, and private properties are protected by a fully equipped and highly trained fire department that trains in multiple rescue disciplines and operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Choctaw Health Center system encompasses all aspects of inpatient and outpatient treatment from prenatal care to one of the finest residential centers for the elderly in East Central Mississippi. A new state-of-the-art 180,000 square foot health center was opened in 2015 to serve the growing tribal population. The health center offers numerous services including emergency room, ambulance services, inpatient and outpatient services, pediatric and women's wellness clinics, pharmacy, physical therapy, specialty clinics, cafeteria, 
Prevention and Wellness Programs, Laboratory, Diagnostic Imaging Department, Community Health Department, Dental, Diabetes Treatment, Behavioral Health, and more. A Family and Community Services Program provides supported economic and behavioral health resources to tribal members in need. All of this has been accomplished without losing an appreciation for traditions that define the tribe. In celebration of these traditions, the tribe hosts a yearly fair open to all, featuring a unique insight into the culture, nationally acclaimed talent, as well as the ancient field sport kabocha, known today as the World Series Stickball Games, whose roots date back hundreds of years. The annual Choctaw Indian Fair is a celebration that enjoys growing popularity throughout the region. Beginning in the 1980s, the tribe expanded into industrial manufacturing with Packard Electric's selection of Chata Enterprises as a supplier of wiring harnesses for General Motors cars. The Choctaws quickly established themselves as one of the best manufacturers of wiring harnesses in the world. In the pursuit of their vision of a well-educated and fully employed Choctaw workforce, the tribe established a number of highly successful business relationships with major U.S. corporations. Currently, the tribe operates a commercial laundry, Chata Laundry, and is engaged in construction projects nationwide through ICBI Incorporated. The most dramatic of tribal enterprises is the Pearl River Resort in Choctaw, Mississippi, which encompasses the Silver Star and Golden Moon Hotels and Casinos and the expansion of Bocoma Casino in Sandersville, Mississippi. These Vegas-style properties are frequented by guests throughout the world and rank with the very best in offering unique restaurants, a sports book, day spa, retail shopping, and of course, the dynamic action of the casino floor. The Dancing Rabbit Golf Club has two nationally ranked courses designed by Tom Fazio and Jerry Pate. The Geyser Falls Water Theme Park attracts capacity crowds for family fun in its seasonal operations. Right next door is Clearwater Key, a tropical oasis with its man-made beaches and beach club. Visitors can also enjoy the man-made 300-acre lake named for a famous Choctaw chief, Pushmataha. In addition, guests can honor brave young Choctaw warriors at the Choctaw Veterans Memorial Wall. Native Americans have served in the U.S. military in greater numbers per capita than any other ethnic group and in every major conflict for more than 200 years. This remarkable array of attractions is an irresistible lure, guaranteeing a high level of return business for the resort. With the growing percentage of college-educated tribal members, Choctaw pursuits have become increasingly high-tech. In 2005, the tribe formally dedicated a 154-acre tech park development as a base for high-tech entrepreneurs. The park is home to customized training programs to further enhance the tech skills of the Choctaw workforce. All told, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians has become a recognized force for economic growth in the state and is one of Mississippi's top employers. Leading the way now is the tribe's first female chief, Phyllis J. Anderson. Following the visionary leadership of Philip Martin, there was a period of decline in tribal and resort operations between 2007 and 2011. During these years, then-Councilwoman Phyllis Anderson from the Redwater community felt a strong calling for renewed vision much like her mentor, Philip Martin. As a council representative, Anderson served as secretary treasurer under the Martin administration and upon her election in 2011, Chief Anderson began the important work of rebuilding relationships with local, state and federal officials and brought in a new management team to help revive the resort operations. She effectively renewed confidence of investors and financial institutions, which provided a healthy stabilization of the tribe's finances and produced more efficient and effective management of tribal programs. 
Under Chief Anderson's leadership, the tribe constructed a new health care center, refinanced, renovated, and reactivated Pearl River Resort's Golden Moon Hotel and Casino, created new programs to provide education, skills on the job training, increased elderly services, and developed a multi-million dollar housing plan to include all communities across the reservation and has already completed the construction of a number of affordable family homes for working class tribal member families. She has fostered a stronger and more abundant Choctaw workforce, implementing a committed dedication to Indian preference, thus resulting in a more profitable resort, protective federal legislative language for Indian tribes, Choctaw produce enterprise, a new adult softball complex, an expansion in Pearl River Upper Elementary School, construction of a new infant and toddler center in Pearl River, and a daycare facility in the Standing Pine community, a new health clinic in the Redwater community, and a new tribal council hall. The tribe's story is one of hardships, government interference, self-determination, progress, strength, and resiliency. Now through the vision of our ancestors and the faith of the people, the Choctaw tribe is stronger than ever before. The Choctaws have a history of working closely with city and county officials. Through the leadership of Chief Anderson, the tribe maintains excellent relations with state government officials in protecting our tribal sovereignty. It is not unusual for the governor to visit the tribe to keep current with the constantly evolving economic progress. And therefore, Chief Anderson continues to meet with those in high places as a representative of a valued and respected people. A people who have learned to make free enterprise and the growing sophistication in the political and bureaucratic process work for the betterment of the tribe, neighbors, and the nation. Chief Anderson walks the halls of Congress and visits the White House or the offices of the Bureau of Indian Affairs to speak for our Choctaw people, much as the greatest chiefs of an earlier era sought to do. Like her ancestors, Chief Anderson sees the need for the tribe to embrace change while holding on to the traditions and character that define the Choctaws. The core belief that shapes Anderson's vision is the need for tribal self-determination built upon a foundation of education and economic security. The Choctaws exercise strong stewardship over the use and development of natural resources of the tribal lands which reflects their deep respect for it. Our mother mound, Naniwaya, erected perhaps a thousand years ago, is known in Choctaw lore as the origin point of the Choctaw tribe. During the years of Choctaw immigration, between the years of 1830 and 1840, many said they would never abandon Naniwaya as long as she stood, and we haven't. So our tribe, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians, is well on our way to achieving our version of the American dream again. And again, we stand upon the lands that were ours before the first Europeans encountered our ancestors, embracing change that benefits our people while retaining the traditions and character that defines who we are. Here, the Choctaw stand forever. I hope you have enjoyed this film presentation of our great tribe, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. As you can see, our strong inner spirit that has sustained us throughout history is deeply rooted and reveals itself again and again in a beautiful and triumphant ways to express our strong culture, traditions, determination, and progress. I invite you to visit our Choctaw Indian Reservation and learn more about the only federally recognized tribe in the state of Mississippi and the original inhabitants of this land we call home. From Choctaw, Mississippi, I wish you many blessings. Hachinya Kokile.